I'm not going to be showing you the new terrain color patterns fractal and different things we can do with it, uh, exactly how it works, and how we can control certain areas of it. Uh, the scene I have right now is uh, terrain color patterns 1. You can load it in as uh, procedural terrain with uh, a reset material, so it's just a gray material on it. Uh, so we're going to create a material from scratch. Uh, so we're going to right click, edit the material, and right now my mapping mode uh, is set to world standard uh, and that is going to make a difference uh, with uh, the color patterns and for the color production we're going to start by using uh, the terrain color patterns to uh, control a color map uh, so we can load in you can load in one of the included color maps uh, I'm going to use the terrain color pattern one and then we can right click edit the function and change this constant node into a color node replaced by color and then change the color map to terrain color pattern so even though it is a color node it does not produce uh, any actual color output it's just a grayscale control so within the terrain color patterns we have uh, the ability to change the overall size of the fractal and uh, of course there's a lot of settings that are also similar to uh, the terrain fractal version 2. Uh, now with the way this is set up you would typically have your rock color being the top of the map uh, or towards the right uh, because the rocks are going to be the higher output value from the color pattern. So if we adjust the buoyancy which is sort of a gain we can start to see more of the rocky areas and it looks like it's incorporating the lower and uh, upper parts uh, but we see a lot of that gray rock uh, showing up as we increase the buoyancy as we decrease it we'll start to see more of the left lower part of the map which I've got is also kind of a rock a rocky type surface with those colors. Uh, so if we go down to the roughness aspect we can also fine-tune it with the bump surge. Uh, for really seeing how this is going to impact the object you're working on it's I would pay attention to the, t the main camera preview as opposed to the function output observer. Um, because they're going to differ because of the way the scale is set up for a terrain color profile. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase uh, the scale of this and get a little bit of coverage on here. And one thing you'll notice is if I go to adjust the scale, uh, right now we have it set to 1 for the material scale. If I set it to 0.1, it's going to make no change to the color pattern. The terrain color pattern is a fixed scale. Uh, so no matter what we do to the material scale, it will uh, stay fixed in its uh, current mapping mode. Uh, this also means that the changes we make for the color production and the function scale also will have no impact. So if you do want to further modify the scale of the color pattern, uh, the easiest thing to do is extract uh, the wavelength. Now the wavelength value is not available within the color pattern but you will find a wavelength and origin output as long as you have the show parameter connections turned on. So what we can do is add in a constant node and we'll use a connectable constant vector. And now we can type in our wavelength. So let's type in 1, 1, and I'm going to use 0.5. So now we can adjust if we want to have maybe some uh, bands in it and more uh, strata type pattern. We can do 0.05. I'll go back in and just increase the buoyancy if we can start seeing rocks kind of show up like that. Uh, so we could also uh, connect a turbulence to the origin and there's different ways we can control it that way. 
Uh, another thing you could do is modify uh, the vector before it reaches uh, the terrain color pattern and uh, the easiest way to do that would be to add a math node and vector operation and set it to XYZ product. So this one's going to work a little differently. Um, it's more of a repeat. So we have 1, 1, 1 because it's multiplying. So if we add 2, 3, 4, it's just going to multiply that input to increase it. So it works a little differently, uh, but it's still possible to use. So that's kind of a neat way you can change things. And this is a render of what it currently looks like. Uh, it is lacking in def uh, detail. Uh, what I am going to do is just change the wavelength to 0.5 and we can bump up the scale uh, to a really high value and I am going to increase the dispersion of the rocks uh, another thing you may notice uh, if you take a look at the function node preview uh, is the extension of this goes beyond 1 and negative 1. And a color map only works between 1 and negative 1. Anything beyond, you have to use a clamping mode. So if we go into the color map and edit it, we'll see there are two different clamping modes. Um, one of the reasons we're seeing kind of circles inside of the rocks in that last render uh, is because I have the clamping mode set to mirror uh, with this color map. If I set to clamp, it'll continue with the first and last colors, which I think this first one is a little too dark. So I am going to just edit that color, make it a little lighter. So it will look a lot different this way. Uh, I'm also going to go into that last color and just spread out the colors a little bit. I might get rid of that almost black surface and just kind of raise it up a little. And there we can see. Uh, nice dispersion pattern overall. Need to make some modifications to the color and probably mix it together with something else. Uh, but it is a nice fractal to use for color distribution. If you're using uh, the terrain color patterns with terrain version 2 fractal uh, within procedures terrain. Uh, this one has a mixed uh, terrain fractal with a variable roughness. Uh, what I'm going to do is add an output custom dependency and connect it to the very rough areas, more contrast of the uh, terrain fractal. Click OK. And then I'm going to edit the material. Actually first I'll go ahead and save this uh, as number two at this point before I go ahead and connect that. And that way you can take a look at the different steps in between. Okay, so I'm going to go back in and I'm going to extract the buoyancy from the terrain color pattern. Add input node, external dependency, and set it to that custom dependency. And as you can see, the function output observer is a lot different than uh, what we're seeing in the actual render output. Uh, so what we could also do, uh, if you wanted to flip the direction, is add a filter in between that connection. And you could use the opposite filter, uh, or you could set it up with the map filter, 
which will give you the ability to kind of offset it in one direction or the other. Uh, but the buoyancy is a really effective uh, working with that custom output. So if we set it to the map, we can fine tune it and how far or up it goes within the buoyancy because we do have some clipped out areas. But overall, the two work very nicely. And then we could come in and clamp it a little for the input range and kind of extend upon that a little more. Some neat ways to kind of have those two working together. Uh, so, of course, we still would need to add a bump map uh, to this and also. Uh, the color once we hit the clamped values, uh, which is pretty much going to happen with this technique. Uh, we need another way to distribute that final color, so uh, we could use a color variation and blend them together uh, or overlay other materials on top of it to kind of blend that in and make it a little more realistic. Obviously you can go into the color map too and make additional changes. Uh, included with the training, you'll also find uh, several example scenes with the color patterns in use uh, so that you can kind of examine them and see how they can be used in different ways.